know you're probably wondering a couple of things, you know, because I've kind of led up to this the last couple of weeks, and this is where we're going. Uh, one thing you're probably wondering is how can a guy watch 17 hours of football? I'm no, that's not true, okay? It's not true. It's only, it was only 12. All right. Second thing is this. Um, this is what we want to talk to you about today and, and just kind of our, what we want to present to you at the end of this series. And uh, over the past couple of years, we, this church and our leadership, we've been working on something called Project Next. It's a, it's a great name. It almost sounds like an Austin Powers, Dr. Evil thing. Project Next, right? It's not evil. This is a cool thing. This is, we're so excited about this because we've had some things come upon our hearts and, and really started to seek out uh, what God is, is looking for in us, this church next. And it actually comes from a passage that we found in uh, one, Psalm 145, verse 4, and it says this, Each generation will announce to the next your wonderful and powerful needs. Each generation. So here we are today, and we are 13 to 93 years old in here today. This generation must look upon the next. And must call upon the next to announce God's wonderful deeds. So what we're saying is this, and it actually matches up with one of our values that we've told you for a number of years, is that the next generation is worth our sacrifice, which is why we talk about food for kids, which is why we talk about youth ministry and children so much, because it does matter. Your kids matter. Your kids' kids will matter. This, this all matters. Project Next, it represents not only an embrace to do what's next here at Cedar Ridge, but more significantly, who's next? Who is going to be the person in that chair? Who, who's going to be the person you invite? Who, who is going to be the, uh, the next new family to visit, the next invited student, the next follower of Jesus? Who, who is it going to be? I don't know if you think about that, but I, I do often. And every time someone new shows up, I praise God for you doing what Psalm 145 said to do. I am that generation calling out to the next. This is awesome. So at the beginning, let me go back. Just at the beginning of 2022, we started making some very specific plans. Um, and you guys trust us, and I thank you for the grace for trusting our leadership in this way. So we identified some focus groups. Some of you were in a couple of those focus groups to talk about some of the things. Uh, really identify this happened here. It happened at our Broken Arrow campus. We, we started to take a lot of the ideas and the responses back together. We took them as a collective. And uh, from we really started as a staff, started distilling that information and kind of came out with a three specific things that we, let me just tell you about the staff, the elders all agreed for a couple of things. What, three specific areas we needed to focus on uh, and what's, for what's next in this church. One of those is this, that leader, there's, there has to be a new kind of structure within our leadership and our organization to the point where not everything is so discombobulated all the time. So we've, we, we've done some things to do that. Well, let me talk about that in just a minute. The second one was this, a, a, a more clear discipleship and missional uh, movement. And, and three is more of a cultural identity. Uh, our, what's our brand? What's our identity in 2023? How do we go forward to the next? And it was decided that that was more than just our staff and leadership could, could do by ourselves. So we formed three teams. And when we formed those three teams, there were some lay leaders involved, there were some elders involved, there were some staff involved in all three of these teams. Uh, people represented from here in Kuwaita, people represented from uh, Broken Arrow. So we took a little bit of the culmination of what God has put us in together. And these teams have been functioning for over a year now, and some of you didn't even know that, right? Uh, but I want you to know, we've been working hard. It has been a team effort behind the scenes. And uh, this is something that not one person, not one leader could handle. It takes a group of people. So I thank you if you've been involved in those teams. And, and we've been functioning here, and we believe that all three of these things, these, these uh, directives are very important. They may not be equal in how they look, but they're all equally important as we move ahead. And So let me break these down. Discipleship. Uh, missional movement. We've been working on this specifically uh, with an intention, an intentional plan for discipleship pathway for you, for your kids. And whenever you park for the very first time in this parking lot, to the time that you're greeted, to the time that you 
end of service and you might meet me or Walter or whoever else if there's a plan to get you to what's next. Uh, you, some of this stuff you've heard, right? In, involving in, in a group or in involving yourself in ministry in some way. That's what's next for you. There's no secret there. But what does this look like? We, we even installed a new discipleship pathway uh, onboarding process. If you've never been in a group before, come try this. And we, we started one about a month and a half ago. And there's been about a dozen people from this congregation that was right here on Sunday night, this meeting. So that's a discipleship pathway going over the 10 rhythms that we've preached about uh, moving along as the church should that we see in Acts chapter 2. So that was really one team. And you're not going to see a lot about that, but you're going to feel some of the programming, some of the directives in which we're doing. There was a second one, that leadership and organizational structure. Really what we're doing there, we tasked uh, that team to come up with and identify new ways to be more strategic, be more aligned. Some of that stuff, most of you aren't even going to worry about. But I do want you to worry about who your leaders are and that we do have a plan and that it doesn't just start at the top with Jesus and then our, our leaders, but it all trickles down to every ministry team and that all flows and functions together. So that's happening behind the scenes right now. Uh, and that matters for future growth. And finally, uh, we, we've done, talked about cultural identity and our, our brand. And w- this team was tasked with kind of giving an update to what we look like, who we look like in our community, okay? So this is more of the forward-facing stuff that you're going to see. And to help us kind of be more objective about these things, not just looking from within and say, well, I think we should be this. We, we hired a couple of companies. We hired a company called Yellow Box. This may not matter to you, but it's a, it's a company that has done this with hundreds of churches and talking about how relevance and how we can be uh, more relevant today in our culture. We also hired for facilities and, and look of things around here, whether it's here or at Broken Arrow. There's a company called Little Mountain, and we want to be very specific with our children's and our youth ministry areas and our, and our lobby and, and all those spaces. So couple of those companies that we've hired and we put some things together uh, about what signage and all that kind of stuff may look like in the future. So before I talk anymore, I'm going to ask you to look at this for about a minute and a half. Uh, just direct your attention to the screen and then I'll finish up here in just a minute. facing changes that we're making is having a, a little bit of a slight name change in our in our church name. Um, and I don't know if it's paused there, it's going to loop, it looks like. Um, but as you see there at the very end of this, we're, this slight name change that we're making is going to be called Ridge Christian. That's why I wanted you here <laughs> after three weeks. So I, we got to get this out to everybody all at once if possible. Um, and, and you're probably wondering, why would we do that? We've been Cedar Ridge Christian Church for 45 plus years. Why would we do that? Well, 
45 years ago, whenever that Broken Arrow campus was planted, there was a very specific demographic that they were reaching out to. There's a country club called Cedar Ridge Country Club. There's schools and, uh, called Cedar Ridge. There's apartment complexes and neighborhoods. And, and I just want you to know from me beating the drum on this for 10 years, I'm like, why are we doing this here in Kuwaita called Cedar Ridge? So they, they listened to me once, all right? So here we are. <laughs> no, it's not me, I promise. But, but we, we are wanting to be very intentional with what we're doing. And we want to make it, it's been awkward at best trying to explain where do you go to church here in Kuwait, Cedar Ridge. Well, I thought that was over at Garnett and Hunter and Fur. Well, no, this is here and that was a joint venture and all that. And we are missional together on this. But this sets us up for future possibilities. It allows us to have more, than a, more of an identifier. As, as Walter, our, our youth minister, next gen guy, says, you know, we, we say this all the time, welcome to Cedar Ridge. And you know what we don't put in there? Church or Christian or anything like that. So this will also be an opportunity for us to get back to our heritage. That we are not just Cedar Ridge, we are Ridge Christian. And we're going to be confident going out that not only that as a collective are we Ridge Christian, but I am a Ridge Christian. I am on this journey of faith, trekking with God. Put whatever visuals you want to your mind on that. But that's a part of why we're doing what we're doing. And we hope that you can get excited with us as that, on that as well. So we wanted to maintain the legacy. We wanted this uh, to, to happen as we move forward. So this is kind of a big change for some. Some are going to be like, well, who cares? It's the first time I've ever been here. I don't know what's going on. Um, we're glad you're here. Uh, so this is a big thing for us. We've been doing this for 11 years. And, and, and we're excited about what's going to happen in the future. And it's not just going to be in that logo and brand, which we have some updates that are, you're going to see about that spill out over the next few months. And we actually have a, a gift for you when you walk out that will have uh, that logo on it. And, and whenever you walk out with it, you're going to maybe be asked a question. Uh, whenever you're given this t-shirt, what does this mean? And it just says dynamic, okay? That's all it says. And you got a logo on it. Hopefully you can have a conversation about what it means to be dynamic, what it means to be a part of this venture, and, and, and how you, as a rich Christian, are, are called to do something bigger than just yourself, and you're doing this with others. So we have been blessed with uh, a functional building over the last 11 years, but this is a building that has been uh, designed in the 1970s to be a, a church building for a different culture. So we're probably going to make some changes around here, too. And once you start to see that and the furnishings that are going to change and, and maybe even a possible opportunity for you to step out in faith and to take this somewhere else. Who knows? Like I said, we don't know what's next. But in faith, we're going to follow God on this. So I ask you to go along this journey with us. And I hope that you're excited about it. I hope that you can understand what we're doing. Um, I want you to be dynamic not just here, but I want you to be dynamic out there, okay? All right, no more announcements. I've worn you out on this stuff. Let's stand, let's pray. There's some goodies right outside. We want you to stop and grab a snack. We got some cookies that you can have. There's also a t-shirt that we want to give everybody in middle school and up. Uh, if we don't have enough of those, we can order some more of those. But talk about all this stuff. You have any questions, myself? Walter, Jason, we'd love to answer some of those questions about what's going forward. And I promise you, we're going to say, I don't know. I don't know. A lot. Okay. It's going to happen. Either way, we're going to be on this journey together. Let's pray. Father God, I, I pray God for, again, direction and guidance and wisdom and more than anything else for your son to be the center of all this. Simple name change or different colors don't mean anything, but if it brings people into a relationship with you, God, all, by all means, we do it. And that's why we do it. Help us to all be of one unity, of one force together, and help us to be your church today. We thank you and we love you, and we're so grateful for what your son Jesus did for us on the cross. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Hey, church, let's don't just be a rich Christian in here. Let's be one out there, too.